There are a number of technologies that Keysight employs in its design software. Three of the solvers that can give you solutions in the frequency domain are Harmonic Balance, Spectrasys, and Multi-Envelope. So what's the difference between them? Well, each has a specific purpose. Harmonic Balance is a circuit solver. Its solution is in the frequency domain. Spectrasys, also known as RF system, is used on systems, not circuits. And although its results look like their frequency domain, it's actually a spectral domain solver. And multi-envelope solves systems in the time domain so that we can apply time varying signals to systems. Let's take them one at a time. For our first example, we have this amplifier circuit. You can see the active device along with a lot of discrete parts. It's a typical circuit. The bias networks are shown, the impedance matching networks. If we ran a harmonic balance analysis on this circuit, it would go into a test bench that looks like this. This is harmonic balance in ADS, the Advanced Design System product from Keysight. The circuit we just saw is inside this symbol of the power amplifier. So harmonic balance is a nonlinear analysis. It gives us the spectrum at each node by solving KCL at each node. And you control how many harmonics are analyzed with this order parameter in the harmonic balance controller here at the lower left. It's for pure tones only, so our source is a pure CW tone. And it solves for the steady state, no startup transients or anything like that. And notice how we've inserted a few current probes so we can measure the current in these wires and make some measurements after the fact. We're also showing a sweep of the RF input power with this sweep plan component. So the output of this simulation might look like this, where we have the output spectrum. Since we swept the power, we can look at the gain compression curve. In the upper right are the input and output impedances on a Smith chart. Just below that, power added efficiency. On the lower row, here's a familiar graph of the fundamental power and the third order power as we swept the input power. This is a graph that's commonly used to get the third order intercept of a circuit. At the bottom center, we have voltage and current waveforms. And note that these were obtained by inverse FFT, so they are steady state and not, not transient. And since we swept the power, if we look at the phase, we can get the AM to PM of the circuit. Now, this is by no means everything you can see with harmonic balance, but it's a good overview of the type of output that you get. By applying two tones to the circuit that we just saw, we can get this output spectrum. So in this case, we set the harmonic balance controller to look at two frequencies to see what's there. It's almost like having a super duper spectrum analyzer. And this max order parameter tells us how high of, an, of the intermod order do we want to see on our spectrum graph. Since we set it to five, the highest order we are seeing on the spectrum is fifth order intermod. So we certainly can run n-tone simulations in harmonic balance. Now let's look at spectrosys, also known as RF system. This is a spectral domain solver, and the way it works is it allows all signals, harmonics, intermods, and noise to propagate from every node to every other node in every direction and when we find the steady state solution, we output that solution. 
The most important thing about this analysis is that this is for behavioral models only, not circuits. There are no circuits like our power amplifier anywhere on this schematic. Only stages that behave like the thing that they are. Uh, amplifiers, filters, switches, mixers. So these models can come from a built-in library or they can be built from data sheets, measured data, S parameters, nonlinear curves, basically anything to describe behavior. One of the things that makes this powerful is that the stages aren't merely gain or loss blocks. This is a fully nonlinear analysis, including the mismatch between stages and filters are really filters with skirts and multiple paths interfere with each other and uh, thermal and phase noise are included and so forth. So Spectrasys replaces spreadsheets or whatever tool you've been using to perform budget or cascaded analysis, spur search, uh, distortion analysis, and things of that nature. And even though we said there aren't any circuits here, there are a few techniques to bring in circuits to any one of these models from the outside. One of them is to use X parameters, and another technique involves cis parameters. And here is a typical output from that simulation. Beginning with the upper left, since we swept the frequency, we can get a frequency response curve power versus frequency. Next to it, we have a graph of the cascaded gain along a path of parts on the schematic, which you can see on the horizontal axis. Here is the output spectrum, and here's a table of some other measurements. Now we turn our attention to envelope analysis, the other half of Keysight's system view software is called data flow. This is the time domain analysis that allows bits in to bits out simulation of communication systems. To understand envelope mode in the data flow engine, consider this 1000 megahertz source followed by a noise density to add a realistic noise floor, followed by a single nonlinear amplifier model, and then a scope and a spectrum analyzer to capture the output. An envelope signal is represented by a characterization frequency and a bandwidth. The analysis bandwidth is set by the sample rate, which in this case is 200 megahertz. Now, since this is a time domain simulation at discrete time points, that implies a sample rate, and that's what this 200 megahertz is referring to. Now, normally we wouldn't be able to see a 1000 megahertz sine wave sampling at only 200 megahertz, but envelope signals are sampled not at the carrier rate, but at the modulation rate. That's what makes these analyses so fast. The output of this analysis is this spectrum of the 1000 megahertz signal. And notice how we can see everything from 900 to 1100 megahertz. That's a total of 200 megahertz, which is the same as our sample rate. So sample rate always sets the maximum analysis bandwidth of these simulations. We can't zoom out any more than what we see in this picture. We're limited to 200 megahertz of analysis bandwidth. We traded this limitation in order to gain the tremendous speed advantage of envelope. Now, if you needed to see a wider bandwidth, you would increase the sample rate and keep increasing it as you want to see more and more. But there's a limit. Uh, envelope isn't for doing an exhaustive spur search. That's what Spectrasys was for. This is for seeing what's happening around the fundamental, for inspecting modulation, for making measurements like bit error rate and error vector magnitude, 
ACLR or looking at the constellation and things of that nature. So the whole reason for having this mode is because it's so fast and it shows you what's happening around the fundamental. Your signals can have bandwidth as we will see in a moment. And very importantly, we can apply these signals to RF behavioral models that are defined in the frequency domain. So we can take that spectrosis schematic of behavioral models and place them inside of an envelope analysis. So what's multi-envelope? Multi-envelope sees what is happening at harmonically related frequencies as well. So we turned on multi-envelope on our circuit and zoomed out to see the fundamental, the second and the third harmonic at 1000, 2000, and 3000 megahertz respectively. And notice that each one has that same 200 megahertz bandwidth limit like before. Could we in keep increasing the, the sample rate to fill in these blank areas between the harmonics? Yes, absolutely. But then we're starting to lose our speed advantage again, and the data sets become very large. So this isn't usually done. And like harmonic balance in multi-envelope, we can run a two-tone simulation. And in a two-tone analysis, multi-envelope sees not only the harmonic frequencies, but the mixing product frequencies as well. To wrap up our look at multi-envelope, here's a screenshot of a carrier with modulation along with a demodulated constellation here in the lower right, which is a common measurement in envelope analysis. The carrier is at 22 gigahertz, but our sample rate was only 640 megahertz which allowed us to capture 640 megahertz of bandwidth. And this simulation is very fast, taking less than one second. Thanks for watching.